Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Take TV podcast for round 11 or the round 11 review. Uh, today, very special episode, we have a sponsor. Um, so we'll get to that in a moment. But the on the agenda today, uh, what to do this week? Do we trade? Do we not trade? How many uh, trades should we have uh, when our teams are complete and when should we complete them? No speaker English. Everyone wants uh, big English. Performed well on the weekend. We'll speak about that. A few underperformers, what to do with them. The you know, can't really afford to have underperforming premiums at the moment. Uh, targets to finish the team, rookies, and uh, the Discord Q&A. So, yeah, jump in the Discord uh, if you want to ask a question. But, yeah, we have about 40 questions or so. So, yeah, we go. Boys, how are you? Good, thanks. Very well. Good, thanks. Very well. Just well. What if- I'm going very well because <laughs> we have a sponsor. <laughs> um, yeah, Manscaped get around, gotten around us, I think, they're around most podcasts these days. But, yeah, unbelievable um generous company so they've all sent us a whole bunch of products uh four million people use manscape products and yeah now now we're part of that so fantastic <laughs> so yeah use the code fttv on the website so just to show off some of their products uh, for those watching on youtube this is the lawnmower 4.0 very nice so it's even got a light how about that <laughs> to yeah, shave your balls so that's good but they don't only do that they also do this is called the weed whacker so you just shove it in your ear, shove it up your nose and it pulls out the weeds, I guess, the <laughs> nose hair. So if you're Italian like me, uh, it's very, very useful. And I know my old man and probably my nonna as well would probably use this. So, <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, like anyone can use it. It's uh, yeah, it's literally like perfect Father's Day present already. This is basically my dad's now. So he, um, he, he definitely wants to get around it. So um, yeah, a big up Manscaped. Um, they also do a bit of work with testicular cancer. JD, do you want to say anything about that? Uh, yeah. So, like, I mean, obviously, research the sponsors of the show because you want to make sure it's, like, good products and, and not um, poor quality stuff. But, yeah, like, going across the website, they partner with the Testicular Cancer Society, which is the most common cancer for men our age, so 15 to 35, year, 35 years old. And just this week, we saw Bobby Hill, obviously, be forced to take time away from the game with testicular cancer. So to see them spread the message around early detection and screening is icing on what is already a a great package when it comes to Manscaped. And I will say my favorite part from the the package that we got uh, was the crop preserver and reviver, which is effectively like ball deodorant and toner. And can I say this is a conversation started with the wife. She was very interested to see what was going on with that. So uh, yeah, I'll I'll just say that uh, your balls will thank you for for those ones. They were very nice. Definitely. So yep. yeah, code, code FTTV. So get around that. Um, but yeah, boys, uh, this Wait, week. Just like the best part of that, by the way, 20% off and free shipping when you use FTTV at manscaped.com. So if you are thinking about getting it for yourself for a mate, for a dad, for Father's Day, whatever it is, yeah, get around us. And yeah, thanks for the support. Yeah. I'm also very grateful for Manscaped because I did accidentally not check my emails for three months and got this email <laughs> three months ago for the sponsorship. <laughs> And I uh, only, only found out about it about two, three weeks ago. So um, they are so nice that they still agreed. But yeah. Um, it's like get, yeah, handing in your scared. homework late and then still trying to get full credit. <laughs> but yeah, they do a lot of great work. Eno, how was your round 11? Good, mate. Very good. I, I started off by shaving my, my downstairs. No, nah, we'll get onto the super coach. I actually did use it though. It was good. Like... I've already got some other thing and it's way too big for, for down there. Uh, so, no, nah, <laughs> happy with the yourself. products. <laughs> happy with the products. Uh, two, three, nine, eight I scored this week. It's uh, somehow the worst of us uh, us three here. JD beat me in, in the regs league by six points. So, he got across the line there. Uh, fell 1,000 spots to 12,000. So, yeah, didn't move up with that score, which uh, in most weeks you'd expect a bit of a rise in the ranks, but wasn't to be. Um the trades, I did Nick Martin and Bruce to Wits and Stevens. So I think all of us traded out uh, Bruce, I believe, with just the news that he wasn't back and uncertainty around if he'd be back in round 13, when, which is when we'll need some players. So, um, yeah, just, just took his money there and got Wits in, who was looking like he had a good matchup to go big. But um, for whatever reason, the ball just didn't go out of play or there was no ball ups in that game. So he, he couldn't really do what he needed to do. But... Um, yeah, hopefully get some rises during the buys, but it wasn't to be this week. I had Baz out with illness of, as well, so it was a primo down, which, I, well, probably two primos down. I think I'm already behind, so um didn't help, but um yeah, 
hopefully improve through the buys. How'd you go, George or JD? Whoever's net wants to go next. Uh, so I had a 24.04 in, I think, what was the worst good week you could possibly have. So I traded in um, Darcy for Proust and Sinclair for Whitfield. So I got a 140 and a 141 off those. And I also uh, traded Martin for Stevens. Uh, and I captained Niels 164, but still fell in the ranks. So yeah, the worst possible good week you could have where you kind of nail everything and still go backwards, which is always a bit of a, a head scratcher, but that's where we're at. It's tough. I think uh, Stuart and you guys had premiums out as well. Um, not having Stuart was really painful, but you know, um, is what it is. I know, I know you've got him and you're definitely letting us know all about it. Um, but our week... Oh, my me. week <laughs> Could have so been worse. Week, yeah, so uh, scored 2,421, went down from 6.9K to like 7.3K. Uh, I did uh, SDK to wear. Wasn't too happy about that, but just wanted to fix up the rocks uh, with Wits as good matchup. Um, and he also gave me an extra play in the buy rounds, but I lose SDK this week and a bit of his cash. I did Proust to Wits. So I think I was listening to the Traders podcast today, and they were saying that Wits was still a bit unwell. That's why he didn't play, potentially. And yeah, he played terrible in the VFL. So maybe you mean yeah, Prusy? Was, yeah, yeah. Does say Bruce? I don't know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so a bit unfortunate there. Uh, but yeah, traded him regardless. I just didn't know if he was going to come in, come back in or not. And you know, he's out this week and next week. So it's like whatever. So get rid of him. So was expecting a bit more from Witsy. Um, where are these one thirties, JD, that you've been getting every week? <laughs> I wanted some of this, but um, you've ruined it for me, mate. You've ruined yeah. it for me. Uh, Bloody hope not, but no. Nah, George was whinging funny. about a 120. It's pretty funny, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where's my 160? Um, but anyway, um, but yeah, so first topic for today is what are we doing this week? Are we trading? Are we holding? Eno, what's the plan? Oh, for two weeks, my plan was not trading this week. Don't need to sit on your hands and then sort of attack next week. Off the buy, like maybe do a downgrade for someone if if they're not going to be useful to you and bank some cash to sort of attack the buy. But um, I think what we'll talk about in the next topic or two is is why I'm probably going to be making a trade this week and it's to get a must-have player. So, um, yeah, initially I would say if you don't need to trade or you're not making an upgrade, it's perfectly fine to hold and um, and then save all your trades to, to obviously get more players during the buys. But... Um, yeah, I think I'll be using two trades this week. Why the hell not? I need to play aggressive to catch up anyway. And I've, I've got 15 there. So I'm not, uh, you know, some people like like yourself, George, are on a, on a couple less so or a few less. So I might I as well them. use them and try and get try and get a, a better premium in <laughs> and, and make some ground. But yeah, I think if you're pretty set, there's no upgrades to do. Um, there's no really point, obviously, getting players with the buy or whatever. Just you perfectly find a hold. So um, it's fine either way. It just comes down to your team and how you set up for the buys. What about you, Jackson? I wasn't planning to trade, but I don't know. <laughs> you're starting to convince me that I might need to with some of the side conversations, which I'm sure we'll get into later. I guess the main reason why we don't want to trade on this week is because everyone that you're trading in is about to have a game off for the next three weeks. Um, has it now or has it in the next two? And so generally, um, it's better just to wait out this week and then start trading in premiums that have already had their buy and you end up getting basically an extra score on field uh, compared to those that don't, which is pretty nice in a limited trade format. Uh, so the only exception to that would be if you don't have probably 19 would be the aim for this week. Um, so if you don't have 18 or 19, then um, trading to make sure you get to that number would be a good one without hurting your buyers in the future too much. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I think the only exception this week is we do have a couple of players that look like they might need to be must trade outs or must trade ins. And so that's thrown a little bit of a wrinkle in the plans, which we'll get to, I guess, as we go on. What about yourself, George? Yeah, so a few underperformers for me, uh, maybe it, well, just the one. So we get Heaney later. But um, I guess what the purpose of this week is you want to like, make sure you're well set for the buys. Um, you know, we are limited trade format, so we can't exactly blow trades. But you know, if we're moving forward with the team, you're yeah, trading like an underperforming primo to a, another primo that's like a top six. And they have the same buyer. I mean, why not do it this week? So, and also if there's a good rookie available that's playing this week, I'm not really sure there is, um, but you know, mid-season draft is coming. So we'll touch on that in the rookie section later in the video. So I my plan was no trades and I'm now half thinking about 
Heaney. I'm trading Heaney part five to English. <laughs> so um, just because of, okay, I think we can move on to Tim English, I think. Um, well, everyone wants to reason. talk about yeah. him. Everyone yeah, wants to talk about him. So was this Saturday night? I can't remember. Yep. yep. I watched you a fair were... bit of this. Yeah. Watching English. So I, I fully expected um, skinny Tim English playing with sweet. I expected more forward time, a bit underdone, five weeks off. You know what did train a bit last week? Comes out and does that. So worth noting, big ground to Optus, plenty of room for marks. Like he was, you know how like short, like runs around the back and he asked for the handball. He was I doing know, that. I he's know. a runner. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So yeah, he's getting those twenty plus, um, twenty plus a game, twenty plus uh, disposals. And you know when he, we were saying early in the season, when he does get a good matchup in the ruck and he doesn't lose the hitouts, well, that's when Ceiling. the score is going to pile on. Because yeah, he had a few tough matchups, losing the hitouts, still going 100, 120. So yeah, I think the Bond Baz versus English. Well, I think you won all three. I can only actually get one. Really, um, I think it's looking like Tim English. Especially if I'm using Sam Hayes' money, that means I have Tim English as cover in the ruck. So that's kind of nice there. Um, are you bringing? So you want? We want to bring him in this week, right? Um, is he like? What sort of output can we expect from him for the rest of the year? Like 130, 120? I'm not sure, but he looks like F one, two, or three, depending on like Dunkley. F one, you reckon? Oh, like 128 average right now. Yeah, for the I year, one twenty. I think nice. one twenty is I mean, like on. He's a cheat code. <laughs> yeah, just one twenty is elite numbers. I like. Are we sure he's going to get to that? Even one fifteen <laughs> would one fifteen would still have him M two like at worst. I think. F2, I, yeah. I guess like I, I can't remember like a poorer year for rucks in the league just because of all the injuries we've had. Which yeah. seems like it would help him, right? Yeah. Like Well, that's his upside, right? He's gonna probably average. Let's say he didn't even play in a ruck and he didn't even jump in a ruck contest, he probably would still average a hundred because he's literally another midfielder. The ruck I mean, the he... ruck work is just a positive. He gets what, five to ten hit outs to advantage a game if he can manage that. Um and it just raises the roof with him. That's I think why he can have the big ones, but I mean, yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, the other thing, of course, is like it was West Coast. So scores always get yeah. Um, oh, yeah. inflated against them. But oh, yeah. I mean, across the course of the year, he's had at least one scoring shot in every game. He's kicked goals in four of his six games. He's had over 20 hit outs in every game, but uh, the first one of the year. He's got like two to one free kick to free against ratio. So he got <laughs> like five free, zero free against on the weekend. Um, he had 25 touches and then he also had... Uh, like four tackles and four marks. And th- that four marks was the lowest mark count he's had for the year so far. Um, so like, it's just, it's, it's the, it's a bit like why we like steel where, you know, he does a bit of everything for a midfielder. It English seems to be doing like the ruck equivalent at the moment where it's not just some hit outs. It's also scoreboard stuff. It's also marks. It's also touches. Um, so you're right. It does like very much feel like a, a cheat code just because of the spread of scoring avenues for him. Yeah, I was looking at his TOG. It's about, it was 80 on the weekend. It was a low 80s for earlier in the year, so it's probably about the same. The fourth quarter, he didn't do much. I thought they put Sweet a bit more in the ruck, so probably could have yeah. gone 180, Game 190 over. If, they, yeah. if they wanted to. I mean, I can probably afford to not pick him and get him in like round 14. I think money's not an issue for me, but like, <sighs> we moved mountains to get him in or like, how set are you on getting him in this week? And you know, like hundred percent. Yeah, Riley O'Brien yeah. just went one seventy five on him <laughs> on on, on the, um, Blitz Blitz Arms. Arms. Okay, who they have this week? I mean, he's the most trading player by far, six thousand yeah. or something. Um, Don't you have like an awful little buy? You know, it's well, it's swapping Heaney, right? Where I'm fine. It's still oh, okay. seventeen. You're swapping, no. you're swapping. Okay, okay. Correct. That's the that's oh. where it's fine. It's not upgrading to him. It's not uh, trading another. Primo or someone that's playing in that round to him, it's it's just a side swap that's going to cost 130k. <laughs> and sorry, did you say English is most traded in player this week? Oh yeah, by by a long shot. It's Owens is the next who is half as many, um, and wow. then it's just a bunch of random trade ins because I mean not many people would really be trading. You'd think like Joel Jeffries number three, um, but it's 55 break even right. And if he goes another 130 this week, he's what is it 630 something k. Um, so yeah. 
uh, if you can't get him in straight after the bye, he's going to be north of that again. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. oh boy, I think I'm bringing him in and the VC is, is on. <laughs> Ride yep. the dogs all the way home. Do you think it's an issue that some teams are not going to be get all be able to get all three dogs? I'm only getting one. <sighs> all, all three. Wait, wait. There's all like four. We already have one. Don't is what don't, don't bad English. <laughs> Well, I think the return yeah. of oh. yeah, the return of the three. So, well, we'll um, two have just got forward status. I'm planning to get all three. Um, it would, I mean, for me, it's Cogs and Butters to hold though at F five and six, which is probably worse than someone's Brody and Parker, right? So, uh, well, maybe it's not worse. Who knows? It pro- probably is though. Um, so, I think that's for me the point of difference where I need to try and do that to make up ground and just hope the dogs go on a big run, sort of like they did last year. Um, but yeah, uh, just look if you can. I think the English is the non like the number one target of the three, but I think you've got to try and get at least two. You might like Bond if you can't. If you're not going Bond in the forward line. It just seems weird. Like we've got him as a forward in his prime. I think he went one twenty five. You reckon? Because yes, because they no are, injuries in there's the so much more responsibility in the midfield on. Last year, Dunkley out basically the whole year. It was Shell and Trelaw. 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 And then also, yeah. uh, English is getting a lot of outside ball as well. I think it's hurting Baz all Baz is of them. a year and, better. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, Baz was like half four last year. So I'm not sure what Bond averages. I was thinking like 115 ish. Now I'm thinking, when you think about it like that, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if he just hovers around 110, which is still. <laughs> like annoying not to have. Um, 15 better than Cogs and Butters. Maybe more. It's got a copper. I don't have the trades. Bloody Aaron Hall trade cost me something bad, but um, <laughs> I, I think I just have to copper and like I'll probably have like a Parish or Walsh MA or something and hopefully that's like a strong that's enough cool. midfield so to hold up. And a decent defense as well, just no Stuart. So I think that's one I have to wear on the chin, unfortunately. But yeah, I'm concerned about not having that. So I think we can move on to how many trades left should we have post buy? So we discuss this every year. Um, I think ideally, I think four or five, I think last year we had three. Um, four seems a little low for this year considering we've had more trades and more cash gen this year, but we've had to pay up for more players. I'm looking at four. If I go Zach Merritt, I'll have five. If I go a Parish or Walsh or Mills, I'll have four. I think I'm going to go for four because that way I also have like 100K in the bank. So when something goes wrong, that's I can get to a better premium. Do you guys think four is not enough? Or, or you know, how many are you guys looking at? So, JD, how many left do you think you'll have post buy or final team? I don't know because I'm currently trading in um, English, which wasn't the plan <laughs> this week. <laughs> I actually just think I want him that badly. It's so bad. Um, <laughs> I, I think I think it puts me down to sixteen next week. Um, so sorry. So how many how many trades have I got left? So say I um, trade Zorko to English this week. <laughs> I still need uh, a defender and two midfielders. So that's three upgrades. Uh, and I've got 12 trades at the moment, so I'm probably looking at like five or four left, which Do you remember how- is, okay. I think like, it, I mean, it obviously comes down to injuries the rest of the year, but that's probably right on the lower end of what I'd want to be sitting on. So last year, I think we had three or four. I had three. They were gone within, I think I had back-to-back-to-back injuries and then like the thing like Dusty and a few others then the final four rounds, I was holding on for dear life. But I had, um, like, I think I had like Bianco and Bramble and stuff like relatively okay cover. Um, so hung on just with three trades. So four, saw the buy rounds so people get, could, could get injured over the buys. So I think I'm okay with four. I think two people commenting on my YouTube, like, oh, George, you're going to run out of trades. Like, four left, you're screwed. I mean, maybe, but uh, I think history says you should be okay with four. It does feel definitely on the lowish end. What about you? I know what are you looking at? Um, how many left post buy? I think I'll be five. Uh, obviously, depends how bigger premiums I get, but I will need one defender um, 
and two midfielders, but I will make I need to make a swap as well from Darcy Cameron to probably get Bond or something, which might cost me another one. So honestly, it might be four as well, like you guys. Um, which yeah, I mean we're obviously all predicting here. We might end up with four, like you said, with two rounds to go, and like what do we do with our hands? Like you can't predict how many of our premiums are going to get injured and who that's going. You know who is. Obviously, you can go off history, but. Um, yeah, you do at least probably want four. Like, you don't want to go in with like only two or something for 10 weeks. It's just way too risky. Um, and one thing we didn't mention with English, too, is a major reason I'm really, you know, besides his scoring and his, and his, you know, probably top two forward capabilities, is he covers the ruck situation. So, you know, say Shrek gets a two in two week injury or wits, you know, something that you don't really want to trade, he can just cover that for two weeks. Um, Obviously, it puts you in a worse position for points, but it's it's a trade save. So um, that's a big positive there. I just think the defender line is where we're not going to be able to cover too well um, unless we get sort of a lucky rookie at some point. So, um, yeah, if a defender goes down. I, I watched your vid, JD. <laughs> you've got six defender mids, <laughs> which mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of helps, I guess, if there's a defender mid rookie that, that comes up. But, yeah, yeah with Stuart, Stuart and Sicily, I can't cover them with – with Ware and Thompson, unless hopefully Ware holds, but it's probably pretty unlikely for the whole season. So, yeah, um, I think you'd, minimum you'd want four. You go on less than that post buy for, you know, eight or nine weeks, it's probably too risky. But, yeah, if, if, you, well, if you're going to yeah. go parish over, over merit to get, you know, if that gets you down to like three or something, I just think you go merit and say and keep one of those trades um, for safety. Yep, fair point. Um, so we'll move on to underperformers. Um, well, I think I want to start with Dane Zorko first. So <laughs> JD. It's he- Heaney's written there, but no, nah, George wants to go with Zorko. <laughs> yeah, well, um, now that Dugowie is not an underperformer anymore, um, George has got to find there. a new target. He has to find a new target. No, no, no. Dugowie, okay. 112 on the weekend. Elite scoring. Elite scoring from uh, Dugowie. But um, so no, that's all right. Pick a new target in my team. There's enough underperformers for you to have. have <laughs> okay. Back out. Uh, Zorko. All right. Do you want to run us through Zorko? I have to be back in 20 seconds. Someone is making a lot of noise at the moment. Um, run us through Zorko. I'll be back in a second. <laughs> what is this? It's his agenda item. His agenda item because he wants to play me. And then he's like, just roast yourself for 20 seconds. I'll be back when I can. <laughs> I mean, that is slack. That is slack. <laughs> Um, oh, what's there to say about Zorko? I, so I think the the biggest concern with Zorko was that he dropped off pretty heavily on the weekend and he had a, like lower CBAs again, so just 26%. I would have thought with um, McCluggage out, he would have been a good chance to pick up some of his 60% CBAs. And instead, they basically went to everyone else. Um, Dev Robertson came in, they gave him some. Uh, Rainer's ticked up, Bailey's ticked up. Uh, basically, yeah, went to, to everyone that wasn't Zorko, which was quite frustrating as an owner. Um, but yeah, George, tell us what you saw about Zorko because I know you picked him up in fantasy and uh, you're not oh. very happy with the man. Yeah, <laughs> I do apologize. I can't fix the noise if you can hear it at the moment, but um, we can't. We can't hear it. You okay, can. good. Oh, dude, <laughs> there's nothing worse than picking a player you cannot stand and then them burning you finally. And I know, you know, don't pick players you don't want to like. He, Eno does not want to pick Crisp. Like, you know, die or pick Crisp, kill me. That's, that's <laughs> Eno, right? Yes, <laughs> so, it is. Like, look, the issue is fundamentally good picks. When a player is 33 years old and has had a limited preseason, what is the downside of that pick? You seen how Dangerfield's gone this year? Cliff. He's edge. in the 400s. <laughs> yes. Well, bargain. <laughs> and, well, oh, my God. So, okay, can you afford a price drop? Okay, first of all, do you want Zorko in your final team, JD? I would love to have um, <laughs> Sicily, Stuart, Stuart, Sicily, everyone. Doherty. <laughs> yeah, basically anyone you else. Cannot <laughs> You cannot afford to have underperforming premiums. Look, if you've got a Cogs and Butters in the forward line, you give up 10, 15 points, right? Defenders, like, well, what's Zorka going to give up to Sicily every week? It feels like 30 points. Uh, I think it might it's be. Too, it's too much. It was and like honestly, 100 this week. It was 100 this week. 
Honestly, well, if, for if Stewart, he was, it was 140. The, the signs are not good because he scraped in for some, you know, crappy, I say crap, for lucky-ish goals in the past few weeks, <laughs> and it's bumped his score up. It is bumped. We just remember who we're about to talk about. Oh, no, the lucky don't goals. do that. Okay. <laughs> Okay, look, I'm getting the hell out of that pick. Uh, look, downside of that pick is too high. He looks bad. I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I like looking jumping. at English in my forward line, so I'm pretty chuffed about that right now. Yeah. Okay. Look, not many or, parable or, odds or Zorko, mate, so I reckon we move on, but I would get the hell out. I don't know what his break even yeah, is, yeah. but it's probably 180. 70, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. I know he's got the last buy, but... Uh, you can't just, afford to crop a price yet. I no, think the other no. thing is what else, like Frio and Melbourne are two of the next three matches. Oh, and yeah. He's uh, not going to drop good scores there either. So uh, like if he if you hold this week and you have Zorko for whatever reason, like you're a nuffy like me, um, then I think you're just in it for the long haul. But yeah, he's, he's only 5% of the team. So let's just move on. Yep. Okay. He's a big one. Uh, Isaac Heaney will speak about. Uh, anyone want to start? Uh, <laughs> Fine. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. So this is a man that has only got by on kicking lucky goals and charity scaling <laughs> through this whole time. In fact, his score on the weekend was saved by two back-to-back free kicks um, that put him right in front of goals because the man cannot convert to save himself at the moment. He's got a serious case of the yips. Uh, and he hasn't looked good on ball. He hasn't looked good in the forward line. He just hasn't looked good. We all know the talent is there, but it is um, struggling to come to the surface. He's also been picking up knocks and stuff as well, uh, which hasn't helped, and I think his CBAs went to zero on the weekend. So um, we've literally seen the worst of Heaney the last couple of weeks and none of the good stuff that started off the year. All right, that's a bit of an overreaction. Look, he game on the weekend was terrible. But the week before, he played Carlton. He had 25 touches and like 14 contested and was buying away their best mid that night in a night that they they um, didn't get the chocolates. So that was literally 10 days ago. <laughs> so the thing that hurts is his, his role does change week to week. Like that, that, that night, he was in the midfield for the most part. And I was like, I actually want him to get forward so he can kick a goal that's worth 500 points. But it wasn't happening. <laughs> but... Yeah, I think you said at the start, the big thing is he's probably had 15 shots on goal in the last month and he's only kicked two goals. So um, that's the big one where at the start of the season, I think he started like 14 goals, one or something, George, like he was kicking everything. So that's yeah. literally just flipped to the exact opposite and he just can't can't convert. So if he's not going to convert when he's down forward, then this is what can happen. Forward scores like this come where you drop 50s and 60s because you do rely on, on goals and stuff. So... Uh, yeah, it's a positive when you play midfield. Obviously, it raises the floor, but it also lowers a guy like Heaney's ceiling. So, I don't know. They're just not going to go. They just don't feel like they're going to him as much. They're not looking for him as much as he, they were early. There's, um, you know, there's Logan McDonald's in the team and Buddy. So, it's like a couple more targets than just him and Buddy. So, um, yeah. And look, to be honest, when Buddy's out this week, he's probably going to be parked forward the whole game against Melbourne, which might be pretty ugly as well. So... <laughs> Um, I know they're probably without Stephen May, but yeah. Um, yeah, I'm happy to jump off if it means I'm getting the literally forward one in Tim English. So while it only cost me 130K, I'm doing it this week before it probably in round 14, it'll cost 200. <laughs> yeah. I think that's where I sit. Fair enough. Um, I have thoroughly enjoyed being an arrogant prick about this player for this pick for about eight weeks. Um, I think the fun is over. I think in any other year, I think he still he holds. Hold. Oh yeah, do you, he will. I'm pretty sure. He, give him a spell, he'll come good after the buy. He'll go in the 90s somewhere, which unfortunately is not good enough. And the problem is the role that we were expecting or foolishly believed is not there. So basically, watching him play, remember in the early rounds, like. By halftime, if he wasn't doing well at halftime, I knew he was going to come good because he was working really hard. He was getting up and down the ground. The way he was getting his goals was he was working his opponent into the ground, um, taking marks inside 50 where you know his opponent couldn't keep up with him because he was just getting up and down, up and down the ground so much. We're not seeing that. Um, he's not getting – his intensity's dropped. He's not getting as physical anymore. The tackle tackles have fallen off a cliff for whatever yeah. reason. It was like averaging eight a game in the first six weeks. And now I think the last two weeks, two tackles in two games. Yeah. 
Um, and even before that, they weren't at the numbers they were um, early in the season. I mean, Heaney is Heaney. This is Heaney. Um, not much has changed other than he had a good run with a really good preseason. Now he might be getting sore. Who knows? But, um, yeah, the role is worse than it's been. He's not getting higher up the ground as much, and he just doesn't really look super great. And I think, look, champion data, they did all they could. But in the you look at the fan, you look at the fantasy. I can see it. you're gonna piss you a lot at, of people off. <laughs> you look at the you look at the fantasy scores. Six run average of seventy. You can't hide from that. And it's eventually it's going to show in the super coach scores. Whereas I think the first five weeks was like one hundred five something like that average. So, look, I'm okay holding. Um, if I can find an avenue to Tim English, which would require a rookie in round thirteen, I think because I, I need help in that buy round. I think. Um, fielding a lot of not great rookies in that round. So even though I think I got 20, I think I got in that round. Um, I would like if a decent rookie pops up in the mid-season draft, we'll see. But I, I, I'm thinking about jumping off to English um, just because of how good English is and uh, his matchup this week and points this week, you would assume. Um, but yeah, I think I still think he goes in the 90s somewhere for the rest of the year. Um, freshly him up to the buy. I think he could even do 100, but at the end of the day, like I don't really know what you're going to get from Heaney. There hasn't been a mid-season injury yet, which has happened every single year that he's been in the AFL. Um, yeah, I think you can hold if you want. I think uh, if you can get him to English, I'm not against that. So, I just think the biggest thing is probably find a hold any other season except the one where we have four dogs averaging 115. <laughs> that just... Two just popped up in the forward line with DPPs and then one just came back who we kind of not forgot about, but, you know, I think it just forgot yeah. that Tim English averaged 125 or whatever it was for the first five weeks. And we're like, oh, yeah. you know, he'll be back at some point, blah, blah, blah. Now there's him, Baz and Bonner there. That pushes Haney from maybe F6 to now like F9. And it's just like, mm, it doesn't, doesn't feel nice. So any other year you probably big. hold I think where it's fine, but now it's just gaps way too big, yeah. I think this has been like the maybe the unintended downside or consequence of the DPP changes being introduced into Supercoach. So it used to be that you could pick someone um, that was like a mid-pricer or like, yeah, like a slightly cheap forward. And if they weren't like F1, whatever, it didn't matter if if they still went like 95, 90, 95. They kind of be like a poor F6 to F10. It was okay. But this year like your F6 probably needs to go 105 or they're going to be like dropping 10 points, 15 points a week. And that's just like, we just haven't really seen that before. So um, yeah, like that's, that's, I think the unintended consequence. So starting out butters, cogs, um, having Heaney, having Dugowie, all these types would have been fine for like F5, F6, any other year, but this year it's just going to really hurt if you've got too many of those types. And not just that JD, we studied, or well not studied, but we had a look at years past, obviously from fantasy, because DPP is a new thing, and 99% of the relevant options happened at round six, and now we've got two major, major ones at round 12. Yep. So it's like yeah, we've already right. made most of our upgrades, trades are running low, and we're like, shit, now we've got two <laughs> top three line, yep. like in the forward yep. line we've got to get now as well. Like it's just spot that's on. Probably so the, it's unheard the, of. The two big ones last year were Darcy and Kelly at round six, and then yeah, that's nothing it. at nothing around twelve that mattered. And yeah, this year it's yeah very interesting. So, Luke Beveridge, thank you, sir. Yeah, I mean, and this is the other thing. Like what Luke Beveridge has done, unless it becomes the meta for midfield coaching within the it's AFL, you're probably not going to yeah. see it repeated because it's like this unique combination of coaching philosophy and the talent to pull off the strategy that they're going with. It has this many dogs going through both the mid and forward line. And still scoring well, like it's it's pretty insane. Wait till around eight eight when we get Sam Walsh in the forward line. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm not no even way. kidding. It is it's tracking that way, but I guess time will yeah. tell. Yeah. <laughs> so other underperformers, I think Rich was tagged from Yeah. So I think it's you just move on from that. You get to tag unlucky. Um Dugowie scored well. He's in the underperformance whoop, just whoop. because of his last whoop, whoop. five months, five weeks. Parting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't don't look at his five round average of uh, eighty one. Just look at this week's one twelve. What a score! What a <laughs> one week average. Score. Look, so he, you just, he outscored yeah. other popular forward options such as Bailey Smith and Bontempelli. So gotta love that at four twenty six k. 
Good buy yeah. too compared to them. He's got a great buy. <laughs> so I'm guessing you're holding him into the last buy and then um, he's turning into bot maybe. We'll see. Probably. But I mean, I think I've got everyone playing the last buy anyway, so I'm not even sure it helps. See how you go. But yeah, get like a success. Hopefully he makes a bit of money. Um, and then Paddy Cripps, I know he scored 110. Um, doesn't look like Brownlow Coleman Cripps at the moment. <laughs> Showing signs of it, but not quite to the level it was. So uh, I guess it's just a monitor. And then like by some miracle, if you can upgrade him along with the like the dogs forwards, you can do that later. Or maybe he's fine. Maybe he just needs a spell after the buy and goes berserk. So he's got that ceiling in him. Uh, yeah, definitely wouldn't be trading um, at this point, but just, I guess, a monitor just because of the, you know, his history and his last three weeks, I guess. But I guess he was okay this week. So those are the underperformers. I think we'll move on to the cheap options. So budget options, you know, these guys are probably not top six, but close enough to it where it won't hurt too bad. Um, and yeah, some people are priced into a few things depending on cash gen, trades left, all that. The main one is Zach Merritt, 520K, a 75 break even. So he has a buy this week. So one you can look at after the buy, 115 last year, uh, I want to say 110 or 115 the year before, one of the two. can't exactly remember. Is... Like 112, something like that. Okay. Um, I mean, it's Zach Merritt. This is a premium, what, four, five years, maybe six years. I don't know. He's been a premium for a long time, pretty reliable, very durable. I think he had like syndesmosis, like whatever. And that's happened to like Walsh and stuff like that, but no soft tissue or anything like that. Do we expect him to hit that 115 average on the way home? Like even 110, I think, is okay um, for his price. But uh, JD, you're the uh, resident Bombers supporter. Is Zach Merritt one you're looking at? And you know, would you be happy with him at M8? Because you know, we all started him last year, and he was he was decent last year. Yeah, so he is currently in my trade plans to bring in after this week. I think in terms of. Um, you know, for teams that need to find discount options to, to finish out their teams, I think the midfield's probably where we're going to get the best spattering of those. And Merritt is the one that I like. I think you can get a 115 average out of him for 520, which is very nice. So, yeah, I'm going to be I'm going to be exploring him as an option for sure. Um, I think, yeah, outside the one poor game, he's been otherwise good putting up 100s this year. Uh, hopefully the break resets Essendon as well as a bunch of their talent coming back in after the bye. So Stringer, Snelling, we had Harry Jones return this week. Um, there's a couple of other important players that uh, escape me in the moment, but um, yeah, so Merritt Merit is definitely one I'm considering after his buy. And you'd be happy to pick Merritt at Anno? Yeah. Yeah, I'm warming to it. It just obviously comes down to, like we were saying when we were discussing how many trades we want left, it's, you know, it's 100k more to Parish. It's going to cost you an, an extra trade or Walsh or whoever, so uh, saving that trade and especially since I'm burning another hundred and something, you know, 130 K this week to, to get English. So uh, I think it's, it's someone I'll have to go. Um, my cash situation isn't as good as other people's as well. So um, yeah, I'm warming to it. I mean, he just finds a footy merit. He's not, he's not going to blow, blow the scoring away. You know, he often takes a lot of possessions to, to put in a good score, but he does he does find the footy um, really well. So, um, yeah, he was, uh, yeah, again, underrated how, how good he was for us last year just because of how many midfielders went massive, which has kind of dropped off, you know, with Took being 10 points less than what he was and um, obviously still Neil and Clary and that going nuts. But I think the next is McRae at 120 flat, who is, you know, not in the greatest form himself. So, uh, Callum one well. fifth, you Callum, yeah, of course. But it's a bit of a risky pick, you know, he played bloody in the back, goal square for the second half so um it's not like you can't score there though but yeah 115 or 113 something like that that'd be totally fine and we know he is pretty durable or very durable in fact i know he this is the year he actually got an injury but he came back very quick from it um so um his history is very good so um yeah i'll, I'll be looking at him for sure and worth noting that he's this price because he copped a head knock might have been last week it was in the city 50. game where they copped it all in the media and whatnot for not flying the flag or whatever. So Oh, that's right. Um, two weeks ago then. Yeah. And he wasn't he was like a bit of wing that game. Just one off. So CBA's yeah. a backup this week. Yeah, yeah. Back to the Higgins 
he scored okay with like 40 50 percent cba he still can past. yeah 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 so i think he's a really solid option i'd probably take him over keys just i still don't mind keys i think uh he hasn't recaptured that form but he's about 550k spoke about the crows fixture. yeah yeah you'd have to maybe look at him in the last buy round but i think he's decent i think he can go then they'd be fine. He'd be 110. 110-ish. I think so. Yeah, I think he's been okay. Um, the, the fixture is the one that can help him get over the line there. Um, Titch as well, Brayshaw. Any of Titch or Brayshaw take your interest, JD? Titch is 480k. Kings? That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm starting to look at like cheap options to um, finish my side. Like I'm looking at trading back in Whitfield if he has a good game. So <laughs> No way. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, we, uh, Mitchell could be in my trade plans, yeah. Uh, I, I guess, like, we all know the talent on the upside of Mitchell, and he had, I think, um, the most CBAs he's had so far for this year on the weekend just gone, which is a good sign. Um, uh, but with that said, that was with Amira out, so I'm not sure if that would persist if, if Amira was still on the side or came back in. Um uh, but yeah, like it's just hard to know with Sam Mitchell whether or not that that role with um, Tom Mitchell is actually going to persist, or whether it's going to shift around again as the year goes on. Um, but we are getting him at a very cheap price because of what he had a game with illness. Was that was that the case? Yes, he was sick. Yep. He had a week yep. off afterward. Yeah, so I think like from from that perspective, like he does seem to be the, a good option to me. Cool. I think the last couple of Brayshaw and, and track, George. I mean, we we're both looking towards them like at, at a higher price a few weeks ago, and now they're both yeah. sort of. I mean, Brayshaw's just sort of plateaued. At he's he just scores ninety five hundred every week. He can't he can't motor on. Um, the Frio situation is going to get a bit murkier as well. So Fife might even be back this week. He's going to play some yeah. form of footy, whether it's waffle or AFL. They're unsure. So. Um, I mean, they're already, what, 68 time on ground, all of the mids yeah. at this point. What the hell happens when he comes back? I don't know. Yeah, it's just how they, how they do things over there. And this has been – Freo have been doing this for years now. Um, and this is why last year – like, we traded Brochet in pretty cheap. Like, it was, like, I think low 500s, high 400, something like that. Um, but that was when his time on ground was 80%, which is what it was early in the year. And it's dropped again. It's dropped to, like, 70-ish in the 70s somewhere. Um, so I think that's definitely that has to be hurting his score, right? And hurting his ceiling. So he's not really yeah. one I like. Look, he, I wouldn't be too upset if Brayshaw was my M8, though, for that price. Um, I think I'd take Merritt over him. Merritt has the history, you know, Brayshaw has zero, one, ten plus seasons. Merritt yeah. has a few, um, and not as many to contend with or fight with yeah. for, for mid spots. And you get him after the buy as well with Merritt. Yeah. So Yep. I'd probably take Merritt over Brayshaw, which I don't think we were saying that like six weeks ago, but here we are. No. Um, and then Petrarch is like a great option. Yeah. Just he'll flew. bottom out at the wrong time if you don't have him. Like he'll be yeah. 520 when it's his buy, but if for whatever reason, maybe if you're making your very last upgrade in round 15, then he'll be absolutely perfect, uh, which is annoying. But yeah. Yeah. Don't think there's so any we, others we missed. I think that's. Oh, I think we Merit, have. Merit's the clear best, is it? Oh, okay. Here we go. <laughs> it's time for one Jackson Hately to <laughs> take off to the moon. Three hundred and fifty k. Uh, we have two in the Discord that brought him in. Can't so, believe it's worked. <laughs> we mean, can't believe it's worked. Of course, it's uh, worked. Just, it's always no. going to work. <laughs> well, <laughs> basically, what happened was. He's had four games of 50 plus percent CBAs. Um, starting in the Carlton game, he tagged Cripps in the first half, scored nothing. Second half, scored decent, like 50 something in the second half. And then since then, I think he's got a three run average of like, in fantasy, I think it's like 105. I'm not sure what it is, super coach, probably around 100. You broke as hell. You have no money. You need an M8. You get a perfect team elsewhere. Hately M8. No worries. You can go 95 plus. <laughs> Maybe Imagine you had a perfect like team button. elsewhere and then you had Hately and Hately. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just, just ruin everything. Well, I think Matt Crouch will make his... Okay, I'll, sorry, I'll stop, I'll stop now. Okay. Nah, um, yeah, but, he yeah. has to so go. I think, I think if you had the perfect um, team elsewhere and then Hately and Mate, you would actually have the perfect team, according to George. It's <laughs> like, that would be it. There's You can't do any better. <laughs> I ain't going to argue with that. That's a good point. 
All right, so Anna will take us through. Uh, so this is, if you're listening on um, SoundCloud or Spotify, Apple, or wherever, um, we'll try and run you through. But on YouTube, we have a screen up of just upgrade targets, um, your players that we want to bring in to finish our team. So we just went through a few cheap options. We'll go through players that we actually want. So yep. Anna, you got the midfielders up at the moment. Well, Who, who's at what the top I'll of do, your actually. list? Okay. This is this is I've done it where I've filtered out. Uh, this is all the players who have the buy this week. So okay, um, you know we'll do this next week for buy players who have the buy that week, and we'll say who are we targeting for this next round. So um, I think Parish is clearly, or it's probably him and Walsh, the two the two best options in the midfield with this buy that we want next week, and um, both pretty yeah similarly priced. Um, Parish is in a few more teams. He's ended up being a great starting pick, by the way. He's what. Fifth in total points, I think, um, for the season. Just doesn't doesn't have any trouble finding the footy. But yeah, him he'll cost you six twenty five k, and then Walsh is six twenty nine. And if you had the money, um, JD and these two were, um, you know, mid spot off off the buy this week, looking to get a player in round thirteen. Which of these two do you think you'd go? Um, Hank, can I just interrupt for one moment? Yeah. I can see a bit of a twinkle in JD's eye. Oh, because there is a five. player at number five <laughs> without Leon Cameron. Don't tell me you haven't thought about it, JD. I have been well. trying not to look at Josh Kelly so much in all formats because he's the one. He's the one. Um, I was wondering why George was smiling at the start there. <laughs> yeah, he saw number five. All right, so sorry, yeah. back to NA. I mean, saying, they all have know, the same price, so yeah. let's throw him in. Let's rank and him. And they've then. got the same buy, right? So they, he actually is a realistic alternative to the other two. Uh, I mean, I think I would go Sam Walsh still. Um, I'd probably have him number one. He obviously started a little bit slow because of the syndesmosis, but he's been able to score immensely. The only thing I guess I don't know about him is whether or not it's like it's coincided with Cripps fading a little bit, him starting to have some of his ceiling games. Um, So I'm a little bit worried that they're like, you basically can't have um, Walsh, Hewitt, and Cripps scoring consistently yep. together in the one side. They're all together, right? They all just went huge for one week. But I shouldn't know if you can consistently get that. No. Um, I would have probably Parrish ahead of Kelly just because I think the role is a little bit more certain and he doesn't have the same injury history as Kelly. And then I'd probably drop Kelly last, although he may have the best upside of the three of them. Yep. Where do you sit, George? Okay, not you, Josh Kelly. Three. Josh Kelly yeah. looks amazing. It happens every year. It looks like it's going to work. It always does, and it doesn't. It just finds a way to not work. <laughs> but He's a hater. Um, At least it's on brand. He stays oh, on brand. That's all I can say. Uh, I brought him in last year, and then didn't really work out. But um, Okay, so Parrish or Walsh? Um, I'm not too sure. My head, my head says Parrish. Heart says Walsh. So I'm not really, not really sure. Um, well, when you think about it, Parrish went 122 last year in his midfield, 20 midfield games. And that was with games getting tagged. So he really, you know, five round average of 125. That's probably what he went last year if he didn't get tagged. So that's maybe that is actually what he does this year. So maybe it's Parrish. I like watching Samuel a bit more though. <laughs> Samuel CBAs were up again this week. I think they were, I want to say 50. Still wasn't super high. Matty Kennedy right. didn't play. Mm. Mm. Which is another another twist yeah. in the tail. But uh, yeah, just one to three. What are you, Sam, Parrish, then Kelly? Uh, I don't know. Kelly, three. Don't get me wrong. We've been waiting for Kelly to play properly inside, but you know, there's a slight dribbility risk with him. You've been not too bad with dribbility, but. Um, no, like three week hamstrings or anything in recent years. Um, I think it's DP over Walsh, but I'll probably change my mind. Like when I do upgrades next week, I'm not sure. It's I hard. think it, uh, DP should continue 125 in theory, and I'm not sure Sam does. That. I think Samuel does like 115 to 120. Yeah, and Parrish does like 118 to 125. Yeah, it's the other thing that's a little bit tricky is like. I do think some of their scoring somewhat tied to their performance. Kelly, probably the most of them. So we've seen GWS have basically a bit of a dead cat bounce and actually been good with the new coach. 
whether that continues for the back half of the year, not sure. Um, Parrish probably has some upside if Essendon returns to a better game style and ability. Um, same way I was saying Merritt would. Whereas, like, yeah, I guess Walsh has to kind of, uh, like, Carlton probably has to maintain the level that they're playing at for the year. So depending on what what you think of those scenarios and most likely may weigh into which of these you then lean towards. Do you think any teams will tag? You know what's interesting? Sam Walsh got tagged last year as well. So I completely forgot about that. I think they go to Crips this year. Yes, mm. well, they, have, they have been. They have been putting time back into Crips again, yeah. That helps him, yeah. So maybe they both go 120 plus. Teams, oh. do you think, JD, can you see Parrish getting tagged? When Essendon's losing games like yeah. this, why would you tag anyone? Okay. I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe if we start turning it around, he's the one that would most likely be tagged. It's not, I don't think it's merit at the moment. He hasn't been playing well enough. And there's really no one else that's been threatening or damaging from our midfield. So maybe they just stop the accumulator in, in Parrish. I think it's very unlikely that, that someone tags Essendon at the moment. Okay. Look, Walsh is less likely if that's what we're asking. Yeah, I agree with that. Now that they've got yeah. a full like full midfield and Cripps is sort of back to his somewhat best. Um, we've got the defenders up now. I think this is the other big big question for people coming off next week is is Sinclair versus Doherty. So um both in a similar amount of teams, both averaging pretty similar Sinclair, just that little bit more. I think Doherty had a down game a couple of weeks ago, got a knock, but coming off the bye next week, I mean, there's 30K difference here, so it's a little bit different to the midfield uh, question, but Sinclair 560 versus Doherty 530. And we could throw in Houston 530 as well. <laughs> he's, I think he's top six total points and average this year or close to it. So, um, yeah, who would you go out of these three, George, or who? how are you ranking these? Sinclair, Doherty, Houston. I wonder if Sinclair gets tagged soon. I think it's coming. Yeah, it's been mentioned. It's he's he's the number like he is just the main outlet in defence. He is the guy. So uh, we've seen it happen in the past with like Caleb Daniel and, and players like that. Yeah. Well, when we talk about Rich this week, it it is rare yeah. the halfback tag, but it does happen. It's yeah. Um, I think Sinclair. He's just such an effective user. He gets kick-ins. Um, they just use him so much. Doherty shares a bit with Saad, but they both get pretty high usage anyway. Yeah. Um, and he, I just keep ignoring Houston just because of his <laughs> name, but you have to respect what he's done this year. So, like, well done if you picked him. Um, yeah, I think for me, it comes back to Sinclair had a better preseason than Doherty. Some people might not care about that, but for me, that's like a thing. So I'll, I'll go Sinclair. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yep. Yep. Sinclair would have been always still my number one target, but I think his last two weeks are going to price me out with those two 140s. So thank you yeah. for doing that. Yeah, that, that's a shame. What he's 560. Yeah. I mean, unlike me, I'm totally not priced out of Cicely Stewart. So yeah, feel <laughs> for you, mate. You must be doing it tough over there. Yeah, I am. I am. Hey, wits makes it up for everything. That's, that's it. That's, wits makes it up for everything. <laughs> All right, let's move hey, on. If, you, if you're in Discord and you want to take a week <laughs> off, <laughs> say that. Ping me, ping me with <laughs> wits makes up for it. All right, uh, <laughs> you can have a week <laughs> off. Maybe you do something productive in that week, like enjoy life and football. Uh, I don't know. It, trust me, he's not lying. He'll do it. I had to um, go and add people as friends to re add them to the Discord because of you. Clicking the ban button, all those people you banned. But anyway, moving on. Uh, yeah, there's no. I mean, I'll quickly look at the forwards here. There's Taranto, but he's injured, and then Gresham's the next highest average with that with that first buy. So uh, he's been a pretty good pick. Um, and then we've got Butters and Cogs, who most of us already own, or some have already traded. So probably not looking there. Like there's any options in down forward. So I think we can but move on. If you traded out Cogs. Could you consider trading him back in? Oh, it's too. Un- it's still a bit uncertain, right? With Torano out, what the well, true I, role is. Yeah. If you traded out Cogs, I think you did it because you were bringing in a dogs player. So I don't think that plan changes. Yep. So yeah. Um. Yeah. Still for me, Butters versus Cogs. Who? Who might survive? I mean, if I can afford to get Parker for one of them, but 
Uh, I think I'll be too low on trades to do that. So we'll see. We got time to assess that. Yep. All right. Okay. What's left? I think rookies who we're sort of looking at. I mean, I have to get one in this week, George. So probably need to talk about who is the least risky to get in this week, or, or what the best option is, because there really isn't any on the bubble, right? That are that are screaming at us. So um, who we yep. got? So I think we'll mid-season draft. I think this week. I want to say Wednesday. It is. I think. Yeah. So that's something we'll. When team sheets come out, we'll discuss it then. And when we do the trades video, we'll go over that. Um, but so I think there's two that are ready to go. There's a few more, but um, I think Florenka plays waffle, scores really well. Apparently can be a bit up and down in the in the waffle, but has put up really strong numbers this year. Um, Casey Voss plays SNFL. I think that's Michael Voss's son. He's a general defender. You can just play straight away. Someone North could look at, I'm not too sure. There's a few others there. I think um, Effort Draft Expert did a video I watched today. It's probably worth watching. He'll tell you a bit about all those players. So uh, maybe he gets picked up. And North and Carlton are crying out for a key position defender, I think. So we could get like a – look, I don't exactly know who's available, um, but I think there's one guy, McGuinness, might get picked up by someone. Um, 102K – Defender, maybe we get one of those. So um, something to keep an eye on. And I wouldn't, if, if one of them were named and they had a decent enough profile of scoring or do you, even just a warm body and they like play through the buys you need them to play through, I think I wouldn't mind that because their job is just to score something in the buy round. So, um, and also being, if they're 102K, well, that, that helps too. So that's something we'll assess. But in terms of downgrade options, last year, uh, last week was pretty tough. A few more expensive ones, but uh, this week, uh, Machido Owens, uh, your mate, you know, that you got rid of. <laughs> he's a 117K. Uh, he's scored, he's been really good in the VFL, and he, I want to say, two goals scored a 90. You're not going to expect that. I mean, who, the same, same play North, I think. Yeah, and, yeah. 10 yeah, tackles so as well. Yeah, he so that's, very um, early on was sent to, um, was sent to Simpkin and sort of just farmed a few tackles there early. And I think the tag sort of just stopped as Saints started to get, build a lead. So, uh, maybe he gets a job like that every week. I don't know. So he's one I'll look at for sure for like McComb in round 13. Um, Sam Butler, I think he'll keep playing. I think Shields probably comes out for O'Meara um, next week, um, but not going to score a whole lot, you know, playing a small forward role. Just uh, you're probably going to get 35 to 45 every week from him. So not really yeah. one I like. A bit more expensive, like 136, but has a nice Yeah, he's price. already had so a rise. Yeah. You, you're not going to cash him in later. You just need him to cover and DPP and whatnot. So not really one I love. And then Jacob Ware, well, we'll see who we get in the midseason draft. But uh, he looks good enough to hold his spot. They do have Whitfield, Adam Kennedy, and Nick Haynes coming back in at the Giants. So not definitely wouldn't go on him this week. Uh, probably last week was the week if you want to go early just to enable a few upgrades such as, you know, fixing up the ruck line. Um, so he's like, if you had to go out of Owens and where you go, Owens, I think yep. you would think he holds his spot. Okay. I think it was just Billings that was out, but you know, a rookie that kicks two goals, you can't, you can't drop that. 10 like, tackles, I think is the big yeah. one too. Coaches, yeah, coaches love, that. love that. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Are he like, yeah. I said this in uh, discord a couple of times, but he's, he looks like he's got the body that's going to fill out really nicely for AFL. Like he looks like he, he, he's got the frame to be a, a really well, strong midfielder in the future. The Jack Steele article came out, didn't it? In round one. When he got <laughs> it hit. did. It did. <laughs> Before oh he God. set foot on the yeah. ground, that, they cursed him for that week, but yeah, it, maybe they, I mean, maybe yeah. they were right. <laughs> I started him over like, yeah. No. <laughs> Yeah, hey mate, yeah, at least you didn't hold him back. for eleven weeks, and then he plays in the twelfth or whatever. Because yeah, that's, him. that was like Dill Stevens for me, but thankfully he hasn't come back. Oh yeah, because he's been killing it. Yeah, he has been. Yeah, and they've so, had injuries as well. Yeah, I'm in that position, George. So Owens, if I have to go early to get some cash to get a no speaker English, I think Owens is the one to go early on. And who I'm trading out, who we might maybe talk about quickly, who. He's a trade out. Jack Carroll, like he was a sub. He looked pretty average. Yeah, he was just just looked slow. Um, not up to this. I mean, big game on the G eighty thousand. He just every time he got the ball, he just he thought he had more more time than he than he really do. So um, I don't see him getting a game in round thirteen. So I'm changing him to Owens. Yes, it's risky. I mean, if he ends up playing, it'll look stupid. But um, oh, he's yeah, killed think, his cash gen in the short term. So yeah, that that anyway. So yeah. yeah. 
I, I can like you, you need the cash. I'm like that's fine. I think. Yeah. Um. So those are the rookies uh, again. Mid-season draft. We'll see how we go, and I think we can get into a Discord question and answer. Let's do it. Okay. So, um, the first question: Machito away early. We don't need to read that. But Machito early. Um. Okay. You need an R two. Do you go Darcy or English? Yeah, no. Oh, that's hard. I think you go English. Obviously, buyers is going to matter, but uh, uh, you want English in your forward line, not in your right line, though. Yeah, that's the yeah. Problem. Because I don't know what Darcy's Darcy situation Darcy, is, but and like, so ideally, you want English to cover Darcy. I think. Oh, that's what yeah. I'm doing for sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what this guy's situation is. It maybe it probably has a full forward line, right? So yeah, I would still get English now. Ah, look, damn, Shrek has a low break even too. He's got a 60 as well. Um, I'd go I'd go Darcy. I think the better buy probably helps you. Um, but I'm thinking if he goes English right for R2, then he can maybe side swap his worst forward for a ruck at some point if, I mean, it's going to cost a little bit, but I think that's where I'm sitting maybe. Yep. Um, one for you, JD. Uh, Bont, Baz, English, put him in order. Uh, I think English, we went over this. In- English, Baz, Bont. Eno? Oh, I th- don't want to say Bont over Baz, but I think I think Baz has got a really good role in the midfield. For Bont, there's a few more guys going through there. So, yeah, I think Baz had a Bont just. I think I'm the same. I I don't know. I think Bont's full time is a bit too much at the moment. Forty three. If someone goes out, weekend. then he's going to go nuts. But we don't know that. Yep. Um, Locke asks top three musts in each position. Uh, I know you want to do defense. I'll do midfield. JD, you I do defense. Uh, Go on defense. Well, you got a name like I'll three read, players uh, I don't have. That's I'll so just read bad. my team. So uh, James Sicily, Tom Stewart, and well George Hewitt. But that's pretty. That's cop out. <laughs> but yeah. no, nah, those three. If you don't have, then yeah. So I'll do midfield. Um, Oliver, Neil, Laird. Ooh. Don't mind Ooh, it. Laird. Honestly. Ooh, that's a good call. Uh, rucks. <laughs> rucks. The top three. Line. The top three rucks. Yeah. With Darcy gone and probably in that order. No, I was um, going to say Wits, Darcy, then Nank. Then, then maybe Gorn uh, after that. Tank. <laughs> Don't tank. do that. <laughs> and then uh, hey, forward more. line. Forward line would be oh um, the three. Oh wait, it's going to be English, Dunkley, Baz. Yeah, that's. Uh, that's I have harder, Bond at fourth. So four dogs. Yep. Uh, is Owens a must-have? Not really. Not a Cheeto. No, really, yeah. is a must-have. Come on, guys. Uh, what's the least amount of plays you can go into fielding during a buy round? So, you know, would you be comfortable? Could, I, say 18? 18? I think I think no. Nah, George's achieved eleven or twelve last year, I think. So that's probably the fewest you could do. <laughs> Did he? Was it that low? I think it was, it was thirteen. Four, it was fourteen. <laughs> oh my god! After trades, um, yeah. but maybe no, go like, and watch that video. And, and I then... traded in eight and five loophole that week because I couldn't find the downgrade. So. Yeah, so I think. Thank you for the, bringing that up. On the fielding <laughs> plays, though, it's like it's a it's a funny one because, like, would you rather have eighteen premiums or seventeen premiums and two rookies? Right, the eighteen premium team should score more on average. So, like, the mix does matter a little bit, but in general, you're trying to aim for nineteen players. I think is generally the safest because then you get to drop one bad score, assuming that you've got rookies on. Um, and like, you know, this week there was no shortage of bad scores, like Zorko 37, Abitraka 53, um, Cooper Stevens 46. There's, I'm sure there's other, oh, Heaney, yeah, it was 51. So Drop that's why, it'd like, be lovely. <laughs> yeah, that's why, like, if you have 19 or even up to 20, it's quite handy in Super Coach because if you're fielding six rookies in a given week, two are going to drop your duds, um, especially given a lot of people are, uh, are going to field a small forwards like Roses, Joel Jeffrey, Durden. Um, I'm missing others that are obvious. <laughs> Rioli. So, Rioli, exactly. So, um, oh, Connor McDonald. Um, so, oh, wait, no, he's going, going 70s. he's going 70s, right, George? Yep. Um, I can't wait. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this so, yeah, so, so you can get away with 18, but 
there is quite a big advantage if you can get to nine, ten, or twenty without you know having to to stuff up the rest of your trade plans through other buys, just because dropping a couple of those bad scores can can give you a fifty to one hundred point advantage in a given buy round. Yep. Um, Seb asks, whose mullet is better, Sinclair or Bez? Oh, whose mullet? Ooh. I thought it said whose mother was better. And it's like, I haven't met mullet. any of their mums. You know, it sounded okay. like you said mother. So, yeah, okay. Um, I mean, Baz's is, is much better. Sinclair's is filth, dude. That's so, it's so gross to look yeah. at. The, un- the undercut on that question. is not good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair. Yes, um, Seb switched off, I think. Yeah. Uh, is it worth going down to three injury trades if it means getting uh, an extra dog forward in. So say so you have cogs and you have five trades oh. left and you go cogs to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Baz or Bond. And yeah. you go down to three. Would you do that? Oh. I'm probably going to be in that boat um, where I'll are. have like five or six trades left and I could go down one more to get like a Bont and Pelly in the forward line or like a Stewart in defense or like a Mills in the midfield, right? They're the, going to be the, probably the big ones I'm missing. Um I think you have to wait and see with those. Like if, yeah. if we have, we're all kind of predicting that none of our premiums get injured during the buys and there's no problems. And then we pop out the other side and we've all got finished teams and five, six trades left. And then you can make a decision. Just wait and see if that happens. Um, Cause if you, if you do get to around 15 or 16 and you still got six trades left, you're probably going to be okay. Like I think one injury trade a week is more than enough. Um, what did we what did we decide last year? It was probably like one two every to three one. weeks. One one every three is what we ended up being forced into as a bit of a copium. But I think it's like one every two is probably what you plan for. Maybe well, one. How many three. injuries have you had this year? I've had like Grundy. But, but, so like law of averages, we we should regress to having more injuries in the back half of the year. We have really haven't had that many so far this year. We had lots to start last year and lots to finish the year as well. Hmm. More durable plays, less 30-year-olds picked this year. Please. It's hard to predict. <laughs> it's hard to predict. Yeah, I, I, I would say no. I, I would go – I know this sounds like a waste. I'd go the mid-ground play and don't do it. See if you still got a few left in round 16, 17, and then do it. Yeah, I'll, I'll say the one yeah, and see what well. Cogs is scoring by then. Right, yeah. So the, yeah. So the one other thing is, like we've seen this year much more than any other year, premiums drop 50s because they've been sick. So yeah. like Petrarca, Dugowie, we had Baz miss a week or whatever, right? And Rather Baz back, miss, actually. Yeah, at the back end of the year, people's benches are going to be absolute trash. We can already see it happening. Like people are going to be trading in donuts, already have donuts, or they're like, you've got like Thompson who's injured for the year. You've got Hamilton who's probably not going to come back anytime soon. And so if one of these players is going out for a week or potentially two weeks, that trade to like sideways your premium then and get two weeks of good scoring rather than like a bad rookie cover is going to be so much more important than slightly upgrading one of your picks in your, in your current team. So like, I think you could potentially use the injury trades more aggressively and actually get an advantage that way as well, depending on how the back end of the year plays out. So yeah, like I just, I think the the message I was like, don't plan to do those upgrades now and go down to three, wait until we get there and see if it's viable or not. And then you can you can make a calculated decision. Yep. Someone asks what happened to F1 Heaney and uh, whatever. Next person <laughs> asks. Um, hey, respect to whoever asked. Is it too <laughs> is it too late for LeBron James? LeBron. <laughs> I just like saying it. I think we need is to too late? explain that. <laughs> who that is. LeBron James oh, Sicily. Is it too late? Yeah, James Sicily. No. Uh, Get the F F two F three. Six hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars, mate. It's too late, and he's You're still it under because price. He's in your t- <laughs> oh, shut the fuck up. Yeah, Seriously, nah. how are you supposed to climb the ranks without Sicily this year? Hope that he <laughs> falls back. The problem is, if I pay six thirty-five to bring him in, while right, well, everyone's using two hundred k on trades elsewhere, then like if he You're regresses, off- which he should do. Then I, there's no way for me to make it up because you, you're you covering just, off 95 percent player. It's not really just doing. Go anything. for Zach yeah. Merritt then. Go for Merritt and I don't know English. Oh, like I English was, this week. It's just such a painful negative pod. 
Yeah, no, it's no, so it's bad. He's, he's not five, keeping this up, he's, though. He, he's five-round average is 132, right? And yeah, there's, yeah, there's yeah. no one that's kept up that average for that long, even LeBron. Nah. So I think you just have to like bank on regression and hope it comes real LeBron. soon. Yeah, okay. Um, next question is, is only having 18 through each, each by fine? Probably not. The, uh, and so the, the problem with that is if you're planning just to scrape in for 18 on the last buy, I can almost guarantee it won't happen because you've got all your in, all your premiums have to play, all your trades have to work out, and all your rookies have to get up. It's just like so unlikely for that to be true three weeks from now. I yep. think you're right in round 14 though because you're trading in players, more players that are playing. Round 13, it might be scuffed though. You are, but if he's say, if he's saying that like after his trade plans, he's traded like done the on paper trades. Oh the next god, if that's event, it, then and then I don't know how that's 18. even the case. He's got to have no. dead bench, right? That's why. Yeah, it's got to be dead bench. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, like it's that's not a good position to be in. I, like my current trade plans have me just getting to eighteen next week using three full trades. I'm like yeah. that's bad because <laughs> like one player misses and I'm 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 taking a donut. Yeah, I mean my it's a question with like no yeah. answer. It's bad, but he can't really fix it, I guess, if he's planned for that. So, I don't know. Cross yep. your fingers, mate. Yeah, covered. <laughs> yep. um, are you are, are we concerned about uh, Callum Mills' uh, role on the weekend? And oh, uh, yeah. would you rather Callum Mills or Rory Laird? Uh, Rory Laird, I think. I think for sure. Mill, uh, just too many concerns with Mills. Uh, like, I'd, I'd love to own Millsy, but... Uh, I think we'll just wait off until a couple more years um, or maybe next year. But, yeah, injury concern. And then, I mean, the role's not – it's not like it's terrible. He can still score there. He played there for six years. He's He knows how to play there, and he's playing loose if that continues. I don't think it continues, though. It's just an in-game thing mm. from Horse that it actually kind of worked. So, um, I guess that's a negative that it worked. But, yeah. No, I think I think Led that fixture is nuts. Yeah, I mean, it was a very specific game plan thing, though. One, because of the opposition, and two, because Blakey was out. Um, otherwise, yeah. I don't think they would have used him for that. Um, but yeah, like I, Laird and the fixture is who I would lean over Mills as well. Yeah, I want to chip in before you take price into consideration. Yeah, I'll put some respect on Mills for a second. So uh, in the first few weeks, Mills' tog was down because of limited preseason, but gained a bit of match fitness. Tom Grant's back up. He's basically like a 130 player since then, mm-hmm. average player. So, you know, in fantasy, people see him as the F, the M1. So um, in here, I think he's probably top three, top four. I, I still worry. I'm not too worried about the role. As you said, it's just kind of a Blakey, uh, whatever, opposition. So um, he's... Uh, Slight, I feel like he's a slight durability risk just because he keeps limping during games. He's fine. He keeps playing through it. But, you know, he's missed games, missed a few games last year with the Achilles. Year before that, missed a game with the calf. You're, you're probably not going to get this with Laird. So just total points, I think Laird is more likely to be a bit safer plus a fixture. So, But Mills has the highest ceiling. So, um, yeah, fair enough. Uh, next question is uh, who scores more, Stewart or English? English. English. Yeah. Uh, Warriors or Celtics? Uh, neither. Oh, very close to dropping the F-bomb. I got robbed of wearing all my heat gear on this podcast tonight. <laughs> so let's let's go Warriors. <laughs> I think I prefer the Celtics, but yeah, I don't care. <laughs> yep. Um, would you go in any scenario? Say you, you have Tim English. Would you go Darcy or Gone? Uh, Darcy. I don't mm-hmm. think Tim English matters, though. I'd just go Darcy over Gone anyway. What's he like, saying? He has Tim English R1 at the moment. Oh. F1, F1. Oh, so like he's so going to be in the cover. Score. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where that comes into play. So, but oh, so it's like it's I would always go, this man. <laughs> I would, yeah, I would always go, I would go Darcy over Gone. And the fact that you have English for cover for him eventually is makes it even better. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have Darcy. He's four percent owned. This George, is a Max, big... Max Lynch, Tom the Conning, <laughs> either side of the buy. <laughs> Just don't watch. Just don't watch. 
I enjoy watching watch. him, and yeah, you know, because he's so because he's so lowly owned, and a lot of people brought in Wits and already had you, gone. Yeah. Doesn't affect me as much, so I'm yeah. very happy to watch him go off. Um, but he's going to be a nice pod for you guys. He's frightening to not own. Are you starting him next? Oh, he's year? is he four percent of teams? Oh my oh, god, yes, more sir. Than that, like in actually, no, no, I think like he in, is. Okay. I think that he might have been coming into the data. week. It might be like about... ten, surely. No, oh, in like less. in top in top teams. Yeah, yeah I'm just okay, looking look. at for the yeah, yeah, and uh, like fifteen hundred are trading him in this week. And if you are going to bring him in, this is probably the week to do uh, it. But... Fifteen hundred geniuses. Well, actually, they should have got on earlier, but anyway. Yeah, last week now, that was the genius play. <laughs> that was the big, big round, round one. Oh, Jack Hayes, why'd you bait me? Fuck. <laughs> yeah. You actually got to thank Jack Hayes, JD, for not starting him. <laughs> I don't know why. Or you got to thank, I don't know, Hugh Dixon or whatever made you not yeah. start Jack Hayes and put the E on because that fucked me right up. <laughs> job security. I didn't start Nick Martin or Jack Hayes because of job security. <laughs> and I started I, that yeah, anyway. Anyway. Yeah, we better not get into yeah. it. Um, somebody asks, um, oh, Seba's got another question. What do we do with the biggest king in Zorko? I say trade. Yeah. Any scenario trade. where you hold? Are you are you considering holding this week, JD? I was, but now that I can get him to English in two trades, I'm kind of <laughs> think I'm just going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's do that, do that for sure. Uh, Trex 8%, by the way. Top 5K. Okay. Um, Murph asks, have you avoided the COVID and the flu? Yes, I have. And um, I think that's it. Oh, CW <laughs> asks, when he says, when are you bringing in Tom Stewart? Sounds like a Tom Stewart owner. Anyway, <laughs> um, I think that's it. That's the q and Tried to filter those as best I can. Probably missed a few, but that's okay. Um, get to those in the Discord. Actually, probably not. Um, that'll do for this week. Um, uh, uh, captains, quick. I mean, we're going to do captains. It yeah, yeah. Um, probably. But who are you looking at early? I mean, we're you're missing a few players. Uh, I'll probably go if, English if into Laird. If you're a Laird owner, then like this is the week to pull it. This is the thing. I always every time so I say, "Oh, they're playing West Coast. They're playing North. They're going to go big." <laughs> captain them. Well, it hasn't happened. Boom. One fifteen again. I'm tired. No, Clary 99. People Captain Bont last week for 96 and McCray 102. Yeah. That's... When, it, when it blows out too much like that, I think guys like that take the foot off the gas. I don't know. Yeah. It, that, so it can, depending on the player and also like other... The team as other well. Other players How many get, players? you know, the, yeah. bit of uh, wind in the sail and they like play better than they normally do. <laughs> Alex they Keith running cheap. 150 meters for a goal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Get some of that. So like, I think it depends on the... Um, on the individual as to whether they go for the kill or not. Laird strikes me as one that is going to like go for the kill. I think so. And Adelaide, they want to win. They need yeah, to win and, too. And also Adelaide isn't, it's not like they're the dogs, right? Like they're, it's going to be a closer game, even though they yeah. should win. Yeah. Man, Rob's going to go 160 again. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, for me, uh, yeah, I think, look, if I get English, probably English. I think Laird, if not, I'll probably just go Lockie, Lockie Neal on Sunday. Optus. Well, I did read that they're going to maybe uh, do a cooler or whatever they want to call it. Oh, here we uh, go. Like, well, they did it to Clary and it worked. Let's be real. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's so, why Clary. Um, I think me and Jody need to talk that was about it because we have no lead. To, to... Yeah. Who is right, our just, C? Then I'll just go McCray into lead. What are you guys it, thinking then? This is like, yeah, because I don't have lead, right? So um, Gold Coast against North is interesting for both Took and Wits, I think. With the C? Yeah, it's... but so like yeah, how comfortable are you with him? I guess Wits has been somewhat consistent, but it is one of the better ruck match. Like uh, like Goldie's no chance. Yeah, um, Oliver against the Swans. That should be a pretty tough matchup. Like, I, I think don't... he's my preferred option. I think he's he was one twenty five and one thirty in his last two against him, but then an eighty seven back in twenty nineteen. Um, don't think he can go near Petrarca. Uh, I, don't, I don't think he's got good history against the Swans either. Uh, Darcy Cameron? Darcy Cameron for <laughs> Darcy Cameron. I was actually, like, Crisp against the Hawks is an interesting one. Oh, please do that. <laughs> please do that. I want but to he, hasn't, he, hasn't, he hasn't shown a good ceiling this year. Oh, yeah. I know you're laughing. Okay, fair, 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 fair. I just want to see people do it. <laughs> you want to see them? No, 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 no doubt he could, Captain. actually. Against, that, against the Hawks, he could, for sure. Oh, 
And then Darcy's probably not a great option into McInerney, right? Although he's Too gone risky. 114 and 120 in his last two, but like last year against them. <sighs> as much as I love the man, the C just doesn't sit well. What about yeah, Stuart on the dogs? Uh, as he's VC, Interceptors, yeah. do. Interceptors do really well against the dogs. Yeah. Yeah. It's an option. It is. I'm I think with English, probably... though, on debut, got to do him. Yeah, I think English into wits if I trade in English. Otherwise, it was going to be like wits into Oliver, maybe. Yep. Sounds good. All right. I think that's all from us. Anything else to share? You're going to say something, Eno? Uh, no, I was just going to say, lead owners. Um, yeah, you're going to go well. Might have to uh, put a sneaky... go well. Ten dollars on the most super coach points because I don't want to watch that 170. Because Led does have the ceiling. He put didn't he put in a massive one last year? I think like a 190, 170 or 190, one of those it's, two against. He can do it. Collingwood. Yeah. So oh, he was he was outstanding. He had twenty like twenty contested, fourteen clearances on the weekend. Yeah. Just they all went to Thomas Stewart and SDK. Well, that's they keys and lead. They do keys especially, but lead does it a bit. They like to just hack kick. So uh, yeah. it's effective and with no, forty meters. Yeah, is Tex back? Not that it really matters, but Not they, sure. they really had no options up forward. Really. Um, yep. But yeah, I think that's all from us. Uh, pick up Manscaped for getting around us. Uh, use code FTTV. Um, Father's Day gift, head over to Manscaped. They got you covered. Um, <laughs> Live, that steamy, imagine that. That, <laughs> that seedy moustache has got to go at some point, you know. Should I do it for the next pod? <laughs> I think it's... Should we do a bet? Like, what should we do? Uh, well, uh, George and I... Oh, wait, <laughs> oh, no, no. I'm not going to bring this up. It doesn't end well for me. The Pinsky is ahead of. Oh. <laughs> I think Shield might be overtaking Ryan Foster. Like, right? That, that uh, would be right. Um, oh, sorry, sorry, what did you say, George? I think you had to wear your over. worst shirt. Next week, your worst shirt. It's not you have over to wear yet. It. It's, it's not, not over. Yet. It's not. Or you can like drink like hot sauce with plus like fish I mean, eggs. The, in the, the original bet was Shield. Like, let's be real. Yeah. <laughs> What's Shield averaging now? He's getting all the 76.8. He's distant third to the other two. 76. Oh, my God. Anyway, I think that's all from us. <laughs> that's a bargain. Oh, my God. That's what he was started at. Anyway, that's all from us. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.